A world of luxury right at your fingertips. Sheer opulence. Sheer opulence. It's an immigrant story. It's a true crime story. It's a story about reinvention. Which part of these uh, elements appeal to you when you took on the project? All of them, you know, the, the idea that he was an immigrant coming to America to try and make it in a world that's not built for his success is something that I obviously really relate to. And then just the fact that all these wild things happen and they happen in real life, you know, I couldn't believe it. And reinvention, that's an interesting way to look at it because it's a guy who's really trying to fit into a world that doesn't want him. It was just such a complex, layered, messy, fascinating story that I had to be a part of it. That was my dream when I got here. But my goals have changed. I have changed. You mentioned uh, playing a true life character. So unlike the characters you played before, uh, were you allowed to improv? Do you feel that it's more restrictive or more liberating to play someone who's true life? Where you don't have the stress to ad lib, you just stick to the script. I did some ad libbing, you know. Um, there's not as much comedy in this, so we definitely didn't like do the kind of ad libbing that I'm usually used to doing. But we we even did some emotional improv. There's some stuff in there that would happen during an argument with someone that was improvised and it felt very real. I didn't feel any kind of restriction in playing a real person. Obviously, you have to be truthful to the real stuff that happened. You know, these are real things that happened. But I don't have access to that guy. He's gone. There's no footage of him. There's stuff that people said about him, but everyone says sort of different stuff about him. So I really had a lot of freedom to create this character as he was written, you know? My job was, how do I create a person that consistently can live through all these experiences and do all these things and still make sense as one human being? So I, I didn't feel restricted in any way. Every cent I have, I've put into this club. I need this! You mentioned a lot of uh, arguments. I think those are my favorite scenes, the intense, explosive confrontations, you know? Uh, between you and Murray. Were those scenes fun to shoot or was it just as intense as it looked? Both. During the scene, it gets very intense. But then when you yell cut, I love Murray and he loves me and we're very, very close. So that actually helps me get to really like go all out. In those scenes, I know some actors will try and recreate the relationship that they have on screen with off screen. So if you're upset with someone, during a scene, the actor's upset with the actor off camera. That's not interesting to me. I don't want to do that. For me, no matter what my relationship with the character is, the actor they're portraying, I want to have a wonderful, lovely, close relationship with them. And it was very easy with someone like Murray. He's just like the most lovable, kindest person I've ever met in my life. So the fact that we got really close allowed me to really, really go for it in those intense scenes. Shooting those scenes was intense. You know, during the takes, I would get sweaty and my heart would be going and all that kind of stuff. I lost my voice during one of them. But it wasn't a stressful environment, really, uh, even if the scene was stressful. It was always really fun. Welcome to Chippendales! Go, go! Gabriel Iglesias once mentioned that he, when he was in Magic Mike 2, he feel sorry for the rest of the actors because they had to watch their diet. For you, in this case, you, you get to keep your shirt on. What's it like to be on the other side of the spectrum where you have to watch the other actors wash their diet because they're performing as the dancers? It was great for me. I could eat whatever I wanted, and I did. I ate so much all the time. I ate a French toast every day. I had fries, I had pies, I had chicken sandwiches. It was absolutely... Fantastic. <laughs> I loved it. I never want to take my shirt off again. I don't know how much of a struggle it was for them. I think that they just sort of naturally looked like that. So I didn't really get into talking to them about it. They seemed to really enjoy it. The dancers, I want to shout them out. They were such a great group of guys. So light and fun. And it really felt like a family and a community. They would just give me dirty looks when I would eat my french fries. You get to keep the breakaway pants as a memento? <laughs> I think they did. I didn't. I kept them calendars, though. Do not call the cops! You spent some time in Singapore. What are your memories of, of, of Singapore? I love Singapore. The food, you know, that's the thing I probably miss the most about it. I know you're very famous for for food and and I miss I miss the hawker stalls the most and Yakult I miss Yakult do you still have Yakult oh yeah of course yeah see I don't I don't have Yakult any plans to visit uh, this part of the world 
in, in Southeast Asia, Singapore? I want to come back. You know, my wife and I visited a few years ago and I went back to the Toys R Us that I used to go to. It felt a lot smaller now because I hadn't been since I was a little kid. But I'd love to go back. Anytime we go to Asia, I say, let's make a let's make a stop in Singapore. Um, it really honestly feels like home to me. There's no other city like it. It's like a city from the future. Mr. Banerjee, this is the FBI. You a bad man, Mr. Banerjee. You ain't seen nothing yet. Oh, she said